Hello everybody, how are you doing? This is Mauer Doctor here from another review. This will be part five of my malware removal series, and today we will be testing McAfee Stinger. Exact pry version is 12.1, build 1253. The latest build date was today. Now McAfee Stinger has been around for a very long time. Since we are on version 12, I would assume that would put us around 2002 when Stinger first came out. It sounds reasonable. So definitely they've been around for a while. However, they had never really gained that much of a reputation over the years because right around when McAfee came out, SpyBot, Search and Destroy, and Super Anti-Spyware became bigger on the markets as well as Adderware and a few other programs. But McAfee Stinger has been around, and it has been continuously updated over the past decade. Now, something interesting that I found always kind of unique about McAfee Stinger is that they don't rely on a huge number of definitions like a lot of other scanners do. I don't remember the exact number, but it appears McAfee seems to release unique variants of threats when it is updating the software. So in a given day, it might only have seven or eight definition updates, but each one of those threats is unique, and I find that to be very important because if you think about it, have you ever heard on a news report or somewhere online that 20,000, 30,000 new threats emerge online every day? That's really not the case. Maybe different versions of specific threats or different variants of threats, but when it comes down to it, it's only a handful of new, unique threats are created each day. So I can understand where McAfee is coming from, and you don't need to have a tremendous amount of definitions as long as you can protect against a generic sample. You should be okay. But anyway, McAfee Stinger is pretty light on system resources, but as you can tell, we are currently in safe mode, so I'm not going to really go that much into a check of memory usage right now. And as in the previous reviews, we still do not have access to Task Manager in the normal Windows operating mode. And this config shows a lot of startup items. Our firewall keeps getting disabled. So a whole mess of problems that we are currently facing on this computer. And also something else that has been recently incorporated into Stinger is that they are using this beta feature called Raptor, which is a real-time behavior detection technology that monitors suspicious activity on endpoint computers. However, obviously we are not testing their endpoint security software package at all. However, it has been implemented into McAfee Stinger to better detect zero-day threats in the cloud. So I figure that is interesting. And it also comes directly enabled when you download Stinger. So I figure we can use it during the test. And also just to give a demonstration of Raptor, even though we are in safe mode, I am able to execute threats. So I have this one executable right now on the desktop. And if I try to run it, we see Raptor uh, detection found. Tells us a process and it says following files to be removed. Again, nothing pretty with this at all, but it gets right down to the point, it detected a file, and we have the option to clean it, and that we will do. And we see that it was removed, so that's very good. So this is a little bit interesting, considering this is a free product, that it actually has real-time capabilities as well. However, I don't know how long that'll last, because this is a beta feature, and they might just be testing it out in Stinger before they roll it out to the endpoints and they might get rid of it in Stinger. I mean, I really don't know, but it's always a possibility. But when you open up Stinger, right after you run the installer, it's not really installer, but more an ex executable for a one-time scan, we are given very clearly on the main page the option to run a scan. Before we click Customize My Scan to see what we're gonna be scanning, we see we have a quarantine, and we also have logs. So after every scan, you can also set up a blacklist of different MD5 hashes, so different thread names. And also when we scan, it's set to scan processes, registry, boot sectors, and rootkits. And on threat detection, it's set to repair the file, not report, rename, or remove it, but we could select any one of these options. And also under, under sensitivity, it's set to medium, so it'll be an average aggressiveness against files and processes on the computer. 
I know I've gone into McAfee Stinger much deeper than I have talked about the other products that we've been scanning with on this infected computer, but we are going to see what customize my scan is first. We see that we currently don't have anything enabled for the scan in terms of what it is set to scan. So if we click on scan, it doesn't really tell us what it is going to scan. I mean, I can make the assumption that it's probably going to run a full computer scan, but it doesn't really tell us directly on this page. So what I'm going to do instead is, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna customize my scan. I'm just gonna select all the drives, even though it's only gonna be on the C drive, all of our files, but regardless, I'm just going to scan the C drive. We will see what McAfee finds, we'll delete it, I don't really see a point to run a CCleaner scan right now because we're not comparing McAfee to anything. So if anything, it'll just improve their detection, if you want to call it that. But once we're done running McAfee Stinger, I will run a scan with CCleaner. But that'll be a little bit later in the review. But for right now, I will be back once McAfee Stinger's scan is complete. Hello everybody, I'm back during the McAfee Stinger scan. Uh, my host machine was acting very sluggish and slow and still acting pretty unresponsive. And during that time, my virtual machine crashed and it appeared that McAfee Stinger had about 320 some threats that it had found. Now, it already took the liberty of cleaning the threats because then when I started up the scan again, about 31 minutes ago, it only found six additional threats. So while this number is pretty low, it already removed a lot of threats. And then we can see the thread name, the date at which the file was detected. And we see we have a bunch of detections. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all these. I'm going to delete all the items that are in their quarantine. And then once that is done, I'm going to restart into normal Windows operating mode, and I'm gonna run some scans, and I will be right back. Hello everybody, I'm back. Moto Cleaning Central's finished scanning. Found 30 items, Let's see what it found. Here's something in program data, uh, registry key, a couple temp files, something that are roaming in the start menu, something in desktop, so I won't be too worried about that. And if we look at Malwarebytes, it says it detected 42 threats and 899 non-Malware items were detected. My suspicion is a lot of these non-Malware items originate from one or two programs. And I know that because we've already ran the scan four times in the last four reviews. But we can see there are additional threats that were left behind that I don't really recognize from the other scans. Uh, the Trojan Banker, uh, Trojan Password, Spyware Passwords. Looks like apps that are roaming. Then we have this smart bar. I saw a trojan.exe right here. Then we have this appears to be a toolbar. And then appears to be a worm right there. Hitman Pro found 23 threats, 944 traces. We see we have several threats in program data, something in temp, not too worried about that. Something on the desktop, not too worried about that either. Have something on Windows, here's Bitdefender texted. And we have this FLV player, or it looks like that smart bar that Marabytes is picking up on. And it appears we have something else in app data. And if we look at Norton Power Racer here, here's we have a couple startup entries and a couple processes that it found. It doesn't you don't get that much of a specification unless we have locate the file to see what folder it's in, but just that one particular random file, it was an app data, but that will be about it for all the scans. If we check on memory usage and we can access task manager, not really noticing any weird processes in memory. And if we check on MS config, you 
we still see we have several weird startup entries, but not too bad. And if we do download McAfee's uh, Stinger just to see what the memory usage is, I did not save the installer to the desktop. That's why we have to go online to download the installer again. I just want to see how much memory Stinger is consuming during the scans. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to download it right now. Figure the installation is pretty quick, so I'll, we'll just go through this together. I'm not going to stop the recording. Be pretty quick. So if we start the scan, we can see that McAfee Stinger is taking up about 65 megs, but taking up about 10% of our CPU. So this could have been contributing to the bogging down of the computer when I was running the Stinger scan, because that is a little bit high. But then again, if you are working on an infected computer, I don't imagine you're really doing anything else besides running this one scan. So in hindsight, it's probably not too bad. But I think that'll be about it for this review. While I think Stinger did a decent job, I feel that there are better first options. However, definitely having Stinger around ready to go on a USB flash drive, or if you're in safe mode and you need to quickly remove some threats, McAfee Stinger is definitely not a horrible option. So I think that'll be about it for this review. Take from as you wish, and I will talk to you later. Bye.